I'm sorry. Welcome to Middle America, y'all. Mm -hmm. All right, well, the last video I shot was about um, the shooting that happened in California. Right. And I said, I don't really know what the solution is. Because, I mean, what can you do? Mm -hmm. We got 320 plus million citizens in our country, and then we have um, 300 plus million guns in our country. We essentially have a gun for every citizen. Mm -hmm. um, so, I, I made the point that taking everybody's guns, I don't really, or making, creating stringent gun laws, mm -hmm that I would be fully 100% behind if it would stop all gun crime mm -hmm. doesn't seem to um, really address the issue because, you know, California has pretty stringent gun crime and 12 people just got killed. We just lost 12 people. Right. Yeah. Well, apparently, <clears throat> uh, and, and it was, people were giving really insightful comments. So thank you, by the way, for commenting on the Facebook and on the, the YouTube streams. One of the really um, salient points that people brought up was people with mental illness. Mm -hmm. So if you have mental illness... Um, Saying that you shouldn't be able to have a gun if you have mental illness. Yeah, that combined with we need to get people help, right? Mm -hmm. That's the, yeah. the biggest issue. I think it's a no-brainer. Everybody agrees if you're paranoid, schizophrenic, you probably shouldn't have a gun. Mm -hmm. um, but it's the other side of it is... Yeah, you wouldn't legally get a gun, but you can still get one. Yeah, exactly. And so what we need to do is address the mental illness issue. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I thought that was very insightful. Yeah. Well, apparently, Maryland, among other states, has this law called the Red Flag Law. Mm -hmm. And mental health officials, I don't really know what goes into a Red Flag Law. Um, but basically, it basically means that if you get Red Flag to the sufficiency of the state they can come and take your gun from you okay so it's like you know but you're saying you don't know how that happens you mean your neighbor could say hey i'm concerned and then you could right. get i don't know the minutia sure what actually goes into it yeah all right right, right. um i think that would be important to and the, the law state that the the orders are confidential um and you know mental health officials health care it, it's it, it's it it allows certain health care providers to seek an order in addition to family members and law enforcement. Oh. And a lot of that had to do with, I forgot which school shooting it was. Uh, the, the one in Florida with David Hogue. Mm -hmm. I forgot the name of the school because there's so many of them. Mm -hmm. But long story short, the guy had, the kid had like 14 complaints. The FBI visited the house. Right, I remember that. All these things. He was shooting out in his backyard yeah. and everybody's like, how the heck? Hello. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, th that should have put out a red flag. Right. Right. Hence the term red flag law. Yeah. Right. I think it was mm -hmm. Parkland. It was Parkland, the Parkland school shooting, because it was the, it was so egregious because the kid had so many, so many issues. Mm -hmm. Right. That people were like, there should have been a red flag. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. Well, apparently Maryland, among others, instituted this thing on October first called the red flag law. Yeah. So they went into a person's house. Uh, Gary Willis, 61 year old Gary Willis, to execute one of these red flag orders in which they would come and take your gun from you. Oh my gosh. He answered his door with a gun in his hand and a rundle. By the way, this is CBSnews.com. County State Police Sergeant Jacqueline Davis said. Sergeant Davis said the man put the gun down. So far, so good. But then, according to a police release, Willis became irate when officers attempted to serve the order. So they show up, he's got a gun in his hand, he puts it down, everything's yeah. fine, and then he, then the cops basically say... When he realizes say, what's going on, right. he reaches for his gun again. Willis picked the weapon up again, a fight ensued over a gun, and a shot was fired. Now, go Google Tamir Rice. Go, go to YouTube.com yeah. and type in Tamir Rice and see how long it took for them to kill that kid. Right. And I'll let you tease out whatever implications you want from that. Willis picks up his gun again. A fight ensued over a gun. A shot was fired. The first shot did not strike anyone, but the officers then fatally shot the man. Another article says that he shot. Wow. 
Neither of the officers were injured, their names weren't released. So, I've got some right-leaning friends. Yeah. And this is being used to say, basically, without any context, the government came in to confiscate our guns, and... If, if any and of the family members of this uh, man are seeing this, we are very sorry for your loss. Yeah. Um, the, the, the niece, actually, um, Michelle Willis, the man's niece, said that one of her aunts actually requested a protective order against Willis. Oh, gosh. So that would be his, her, his sister. Yeah. One of his sisters. Well, she was trying to protect him. Well, I mean, he answers the door with a gun. Yeah. You know, you see the cops outside and you show up with a gun. Yeah. Uh, so, extremely tragic situation because what we're trying to avoid is gun deaths. I know. And uh, if a person gets killed by police, that's still a gun death. Oh, yeah. My concern, though, is... So, there's a couple things that are going on in my head. One, it's like... We're trying to do something different. Right. than we've ever done in this country. Mm -hmm. I think that's a good thing. Um, I would have hoped that, you know, the Parkland shooting would have been avoiding to some degree if the cops would have showed up and took those kids gun that kid's gun from them. Yeah, yeah. Um, the problem is, is that... So, so here's, here's what's happening. The right-wing folks, who are good friends of mine, you know, are using this as an example of Look at this tyrannical government. They rolled up to this guy's mm -hmm. house and killed him. Yeah. That's not what happened. Right. The guy pulled it. He, he picked the gun up off the floor. Right. Because he didn't want his gun taken from him. Now, mm -hmm. there is this whole self-fulfilling prophecy almost that if you, if the government comes and takes your guns, and this is one step to tyranny because now they're going to kill us all and they bring yeah. up Hitler and, you know, all these other people who confiscated guns so that the populace could, I mean, look. Australia did a gun confiscation. The Australian government hasn't gone and oppressed the people and killed a whole bunch of them. I'm not saying that America is Australia, but I'm saying this idea that if the... If, if, that it's definitely going to happen. Right, it's going to necessarily lead to tyranny. Mm -hmm. The only thing that's stopping us from tyranny is that every citizen has a gun. Right. I mean, come on. Right. That's just... It, in the modern world, that hasn't borne out to be true. There is lots of places in Europe that have gun confiscation laws and do not turn into horrible, tyrannical governments. Uh -huh. But there is this sort of mentality that's preached that way. So then, when they, when people, I'm using the term, you know, triggered kind of ironically here, but as soon as they hear a story like this, they immediately get triggered. Here it is. Yeah. And then, oh, oh yeah. he got killed. So it's all, man gets killed in his own house because right. the cops try to take his gun from him. Yeah. No. People who knew this man the best, his own family, were very, very concerned that he was a gun owner. They thought he was too imbalanced to own a gun. And so I don't I don't think that this red flag law, I'll have to look more into it. Maybe some of us know already. But I don't think it means they take your gun indefinitely. There's probably some medical procedure that, that, that they do to, to measure to whether or not yeah. you, you right. are fit to own a firearm. Yeah. But, I mean, and, and I want to know your guys' um, Wow. I'm gonna actually read one of my friend's um, <clears throat> Facebook posts about this, this situation. A 60 year old man shot dead in his home in Maryland due to the quote unquote red flag law. If the nation is going to give up their firearms to tyranny, more deaths will happen. More to follow, I'm sure. So that's how right. it's being phrased. Right, right. Instead of the people that knew this guy the best were extremely concerned. Yeah. The cops showed up, right. he cooperated initially. And then when he heard they were taking his gun, he picked it up again. Yeah. Which is a death sentence for me, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, let's just be real about it. So it, it, it's like, I think we're trying to figure out as a nation how to do this. And it, it's a serious question. What else could, should the cops have done? Uh, and if, let me ask another question. If you disagree with this action from the police... If it is shown that a person is a serious risk for owning a firearm, what should be done in that situation? Um, is our loyalty to the Second Amendment such that even if a per we're only going to react to mass shootings, we're not going to do anything preventative? And, and, and just speaking of preventative measures, actually, um, the new law 
th this this uh, right here is um, from American Military News. Um, the new law was written less than two weeks after the Rite Aid Distribution Center shooting in September in a Aberdeen, Maryland, according to the Washington uh, okay. Post. Um, Snokia Mosley, 26, a temporary Rite Aid employee who had been diagnosed with schizophrenia, opened fire on six people. Jeez. Three were killed before she turned the gun on herself, ending her life. First of all, I didn't even know about that shooting. Did you? No, uh -uh, I never heard of that Did one. you? <laughs> um, Mosley had allegedly shown signs of mental illness and had struggled with her sexual identity. She was not truthful in her applications to purchase a gun about her mental health issues. She lied mm -hmm. about her issues. Well, yeah. Captain Carl Brooks with the Harford County Sheriff's Office said in regard to the Rite Aid shooting, had the law been in place, I think what would have happened is it would have given the family the opportunity to use some avenues that currently are not available. That step was missing before. We yep. had to wait for an action to occur. Now we can take some steps ahead of time and hopefully prevent these things from happening. Wow. Yeah. What do you do if somebody lies on their application? They get well, a gun. Yeah. It's 325 who's gonna tell you the truth? Who's gonna say the truth? If they want to get a weapon and they have mental illness, of course they're gonna lie. What yeah. else should they do? There's 325 million of us. Mm -hmm. Who who's gonna go in and verify whether or not you person really has a mental illness? Right. But the family knows. Right. And the family can say, hey, Snooky is not doing really this good. It's not good. Get yeah. him, get the gun away from her. So I don't think it's a foolproof plan, but like I said, I'm a fan of preventative. Mm-hmm. If you're afraid of tyranny, one of the one of the markers of tyranny is that the people are afraid. Right. Oh, for sure. Well, hello. Yeah. <laughs> We're now in the tyranny. I think all, our entire country is being held hostage by psychopaths with access to automatic weapons. No, it's true. It's true because even like, you know, like you say, we'll go to the movie theater and like you position yourself in such a way so you can see what's going on. And you know what I mean? Like there's certain decisions that people on a day to day basis make because of the shootings that are happening all over the place. It's, there it's at a bar. Now it's at a school. Now it's at, now it's at a church. There's like all these different places where mass shootings are happening. Right. And then people there's are no having to, reason to, no, people are having to react to that. So we're inevitably living underneath this fear and a tyranny in a sort because right. <laughs> Right. Uh, this to me sounds like a real common sense solution. I, 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 I don't think that if some random person says, oh, this person's a red flag, that that's an issue. Mm -hmm. But I think if your own family members say this is an issue, yeah. or mental health professionals say this is an issue, yeah. um, then I, I think that that's valid. And I think preventative, I'm always a fan of preventative measures. Yeah that keep more people alive. And we, we gotta ask ourselves some tough questions. What mind state is this person in knowing what we've seen from police officers in the last five years on camera? Yeah. As far as how quick they are to pull the trigger. Right. And I'm not judging them because I've not been in that situation where you have to show certain yeah. types of yeah. restraints. I do judge them for the Timmy Rice issue. Right. But I get it. You know, I've also seen videos where a cop, I showed you that one that video one was, where- That's one I was thinking the of. The cop was killed pretty, you know, yeah. two seconds. And the guy was, you know, kind of weird, but- I would have never seen that coming. You mind if I just pat down your pockets real quick? You don't have anything in here? No, no. Okay, nothing in here? No, this is my smoke. Okay. And then the, the cop, we'll we'll post that video in the link too because I you gotta sh you gotta see the other side here of what cops are dealing with. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we're gonna post the Tamir Rice video. We're gonna sh we're gonna post the other video where the police officer was killed, um, and, and it basically only took a second or two. And the oh, conversation yeah. was kind of normal. It was, it was gum, he was talking about gum, I think. Yeah, I'm sure it was actually less confrontational than the, this situation. Yeah, oh yeah. So if I think we gotta be very careful about how we phrase this stuff where it's like, oh, the cops just broke it. But yeah. this is what I'm talking about. Yeah. Responsibility in as now yeah. we are the media. Mm -hmm. So when my friend posts something like this without the content, that's highly irresponsible. Right. And it puts up into the ether this fueling of this conspiracy theory mm -hmm. that now the government is going to take your guns. Mm -hmm. And it's like, 
No. I think it actually creates more of these situations because people already have it in their heads like, I'm not going to let my gun get taken right. away by the government. And right. then when they hear that, they're like, oh my gosh, now they're shooting them. So now, you know, people are going to be way more ready to pull that trigger before setting the gun down, but, um, which is going to land in more deaths. But, but that's what I'm talking about with the self-fulfilling prophecy. Yeah. Is that if you have this theory that that's what's happening, yeah. then yeah, you know, and, and you know... <laughs> I've got I've got a I've got a brother currently active in law enforcement mm -hmm. that is in danger uh -huh. more than normal. I'll say it that way every single day of his life. Right. And so, you know, don't take what I said about Tamir Rice to be that you know I have animus toward police. I don't. I highly respect what they do, mm -hmm. and my belief, firm belief, is that the majority of them want to do good for their community and know that they're putting their life on the line every single day for their community. Yeah. So now this happens and then it gets spun by not right or left wing media outlets, but all of us not understanding that we are now the media. Mm -hmm. So if you've got 2000 friends on your Facebook page and you post that interpretation of what happened, now you've just, I don't know what the net you know, a hundred people are now, it reinforces this conspiracy theory. And we need to talk about what happened. Mm -hmm. I think that to me, this is a common sense solution to some of these issues. We're not taking everybody's gun away, but if your own flesh and blood or your mental health, your, your mental health practitioner doctor, yeah. says that you're an issue and that you need a timeout from a gun, I think that's a good play. Uh -huh. And, and I, I think there needs to be some bending and some compromise on, as to how we interpret and apply the Second Amendment. I, I think that people are afraid, though, of even what you just said, because, you know, the whole witch hunt thing, or family members that don't get along with other family members, and then somebody true. says something, even though you're completely good, you know, but they just want to cause trouble, because there are people, I mean, we, we know lots of people and lots of families <laughs> that just want to cause trouble for other people. For sure. And they would do that knowing how important that person's, you know, weapons are to them. Yeah, but you give up the weapon, you have an evaluation, I'm sure, and they give you your gun back. Well, that's what would have to happen, but people would have to wait. And, yeah, and I think that initial moment of having that taken away from you, people feel too much like, there goes my freedom, there goes my safety. I think people's freedom and safety is tied up so much into the weapon that when that goes, like something, some security of theirs is gone. Yeah. I don't know. I mean... But I, I agree with you. I think that that's the way to do it. Like, you have to just just let it go, do the evaluation, and get your weapon back. Um, but because yeah. as it stands right now, yeah. But but is the inconvenience of having your gun taken from you for a week or two while you do an evaluation to get it back? Is that convenience worth the life of people it may save? Because mm -hmm. right. here's the crazy thing about this law: we will never know how effective it is. Because right. it, it, no, it'll, it'll function to prevent something. Right. So, we, we, I'm not going to speculate on this individual because he died, but you, you don't think that, I mean, shoot, if there's a thousand of these and 80% of them are false, mm -hmm. but 20% of them are right on. Right. I'm good with that. Yeah, me too. I'm good with that. Yeah, me too. Um, and, and, and by the way, there isn't this monolithic interpretation of the Second Amendment. I mean, the Second Amendment, you're going to have a very, very hard, and maybe we do a show on this, and maybe we do a debate show on this. You're going to have a very hard, you know, we'll probably do a debate show on this. You have a hard time getting from, you know, not infringe upon, you know, the, the use of arms to formulate a well-organized militia. Mm -hmm. Because we didn't have a standing army at the time. Mm -hmm. And so, if you don't have an official standing army, you need a militia, and then the militia needs to be armed. Mm hmm Right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> you, to go from that to everybody should deserves to have an AR-15, even if they're <laughs> displaying violent tendencies toward the citizen yeah. pop. I, I think that that's a very hard stretch. Yeah. You're gonna have a very hard time proving that from the Second Amendment. I, but here's the thing: even if the Second Amendment does say everybody can have one, we have a problem. And so and it's getting worse. I don't have a problem here. And I, I, I do think that, you know, I, I, I agree with you. There can be abuses on, 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 you know, Aunt Susie hates Cousin Rick. But in this situation, 
in this situation, think it through. No, he shows because of up, how he responded. He showed up to the, it, to the door with a gun. Right. You know the police right. outside. Right. And when you know that the cops are coming to take your gun, and then you try to take it back up, what are you going to do? You're going to shoot both cops uh, and you're going to get away with it? The police you're not. showed up to his house. Yeah. He looks outside the police and he has a gun already. Mm-hmm. I can see why his family said, oh, we have problems here. Right. Um, so, um, so let us know what you think. Do you, th do you think that uh, we're, we're out to left field here? Do you think that we're enabling the uh, tyrannical uh, uh, deep state folks who want to take over our country? Or do you think that this is a step in the positive direction as a, as a policy? Mm -hmm. um, and do you think that um, we need we need more of these? So um, there's Rhode Island. There's there's Florida. I think has one. I think I'm not sure, which would be really interesting because Florida has these stand your ground laws where you can shoot someone if you feel threatened. That's a whole other issue. Um, anyway, um, also if somebody has an actual copy of the what the statute actually says, that would be great too. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. Uh, love your neighbor. Take care of each other. We'll see you next time. Middle America, we're out of here.